Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the final section for us in Chapter 1, Section 1-7, Transformations in the Coordinate Plane. Our objectives are identify reflections, rotations, and translations, and graph transformations in the coordinate plane. Vocabulary, we have transformation, pre-image, image, reflection, rotation, and translation. And transformations are something that you're going to work on a lot once you get to Algebra 2. So we're going to kind of get our feet wet here and give, us, give ourselves a little bit of an introduction to transformations in the geometry class. All right, we've got to warm up with just a few questions. When I tell you to pause the video, what I'd like for you to do is... Pause it, work on those questions, and then turn it back on when you're ready to check your answers. Here is the correct picture for number one. Draw a line that divides a right angle in half. Here is one of many possible answers for number two. Draw three different squares with three comma two as one vertex. And you can see there are three squares drawn here. This one could have had many different answers as long as one vertex of the square is at the coordinate 3 comma 2. Here is the correct answer to number 3. The values of x and y when we set up the algebraic equations for the coordinate pair and the expression for the coordinate pair. Okay, let's talk about transformations. A transformation is a change in the position, size, or shape of a figure. The original figure, or before image, is called a pre-image. And the resulting figure, or the after image, is called the image. A transformation maps the pre-image to the image, or kind of directs the before and the after. We use arrow notation to describe the transformation, and as far as the after or the image, we use little tick marks to designate that that's the after, or again, the image. We have three different types of transformations that do not change the size of the picture. The first one is a reflection, and a reflection we used to call a flip. It always has a line over which we reflect, and typically they will be the x-axis and the, white, the y-axis this year. So it's pretty much like a mirror image, which is why it's called a reflection. A rotation is like a spin or a turn, and it always has a point of rotation around which the image is rotating. So imagine that you take something and you spin it like a a board spinner or a pinwheel, something like that, that you can actually turn around from a central point. Then we have what we call a translation, and a translation is really just keeping something in the same orientation, so we're not changing the way that it's facing, but we're just moving it, maybe up, down, or sideways, horizontally or vertically. And that we used to call a slide. That is called a translation. So those are the three different types of transformations that we're going to be talking about that do not change the size of the image. These are known as rigid transformations because they don't change the size of the object. Okay, let's take a look at example number one. We want to be able to identify the transformation. The instructions say identify the transformation, then use arrow notation to describe the transformation. As we look at the picture in question A, we see that the pre-image is the triangle in the blue color. And we know this because the letters A, B, and C, the three vertices of the triangle, do not have the little tick marks. We notice that the red triangle does have the little tick marks on the A, B, and C, so it's actually triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, and that one is the image. So how did the triangle move? Well, point A maps to point A prime, point B maps to point B prime, and point C maps to point C prime. When we look at the arrows in this way, it looks like there was a rotation. And that is, in fact, what happened. Now, by how much was the rotation? 
Well, the C was oriented to the right-hand side, and now in the image, it's oriented to the top, looking upward, or in the positive Y direction. So that's actually a 90-degree rotation in the counterclockwise direction. Last of all, we need to create the mapping statement, and that is going to be triangle ABC, which is our pre-image triangle, maps to, and that's what the little arrow says, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. We're done with question A, and we're going to move on to question B. Once again, the figure that does not have the tick marks is the pre-image. The figure that does have the tick marks for the names of the points is the image. Now let's take a look at how this pre-image changed to the image. Point D maps to point D prime. Point E maps to point E prime. Point F maps to point F prime. And point G maps to point G prime. And we can see that actually what happened here is a flip or a reflection. And where did it reflect? It reflected over the x-axis. Now that we've identified which is the pre-image, which is the image, and what type of transformation it was, the last thing that we need to do is write the mapping statement. And with a triangle, we use the triangle symbol, but when we have a quadrilateral, such as this rectangle, we do not use any kind of a symbol. We just put the four letters together. So D, E, F, G maps to D prime, E prime, F prime, G prime. And we're all done with that mapping statement. On example two, we want to be able to draw the pre-image and the image and then identify the transformation. Let's start by graphing and labeling the points in the question. It tells us about a figure having vertices A, B, and C. So we're going to draw that, and then we have an, the image of the figure with vertices A prime, B prime, and C prime. Pause the video and draw the two figures, labeling each of the points. Once we've got the pre-image and the image mapped, we can take a look and see what's happening with each of the points, each of the vertices of these two triangles. We know point A maps to point A prime, point B maps to point B prime, and point C maps to point C prime, and we see that what we ended up having is a reflection over the y-axis. So far, we've been looking at transformations as what happens on the graph, but there's another way that we can look at transformations, and that is the change that's taking place to the x and the y-coordinate on the coordinate plane. So to find the coordinate for the image of the figure in a translation, what we're going to be doing is add a specific value to the x-coordinate of the pre-image and another value to the y-coordinate of the pre-image. And that is going to give us the new coordinates. So the original coordinates were of the pre-image, and this change is going to give us the coordinates of the image. In symbols, we see it in a mapping statement. We start out with x and we end up with x plus a. And the y coordinate, we just start out with y and then we end up with y plus b. So the change that has taken place is in the a or the b. Now remember the a and b can be positive numbers, could be negative numbers. So let's take a look at example three, translations in the coordinate plane. What we want to do is find the coordinates for the image the image of triangle ABC after the translation takes place. First thing that we're going to do is draw in the pre-image, which is missing from your diagram, and I do apologize. So let's draw in the pre-image. Here are the coordinates for the pre-image, A, B, and C. They create a triangle, which I have labeled with the point names A, B, and C. Okay, now what we need to do is make the transformation, which happens to be a translation. 
the x coordinates are going to have 2 added to them. We have successfully determined the x coordinates for the image. Next, we need to find the y coordinates of the image for a prime, b prime, c prime. Just a quick note when we make a change to the x coordinate between the pre image and the image, that means we're going to have a change in that horizontal direction. If we were to make a change in the, on the y coordinate, as we have in our y plus 1 here, what's going to happen is we're going to see a difference in the vertical location of the image compared to the pre-image. Okay, let's find those y coordinates. Our y coordinates were 2 for point A, 4 for point B, and 1 for point C. To each of those, we're going to subtract 1 to find the coordinate of the image point. So 2 minus 1 is going to give us 1, 4 minus 1 is going to give us 3, and 1 minus 1 is going to give us 0. So at this point, we have the points that belong to the image, or the after, and what we're going to do is graph those now. A prime is at negative 2 comma 1. B prime is at negative 1 comma 3. And C prime is at 1 comma 0. So using the mapping symbol, we're able to find the coordinates of the image. And when we graph both the pre-image and the image, we can see that a transformation Specifically, a translation has taken place where we moved 2 in the horizontal direction, in the positive horizontal direction, and 1 down or 1 in the negative vertical direction. This is our last example before we hit our practice problems. In question number four, we've got a real-world application. This is a part of a tile floor, and we want to write a mapping rule for the translation of hexagon one to hexagon two. I'm going to color the hexagons one and two in just so that it makes it a little bit easier to read. I'm also going to label them pre-image and image so that we know exactly what we're working with. And even though the entire drawing has moved from one place to the other, what we're going to be doing is just looking at one point of each one, and it's got to be the corresponding point. So I'm picking this kind of lower left-hand corner. Now, when we look at the pre-image, the coordinate pair that marks the location of our reference point we're going to call this x and y. And x and y maps to a different location. And what happened? In the horizontal or the x direction, we went 1, 2, 3 units in the negative x direction. What happened in the y direction? It looks like we went up 1, and a half units, a half and then one. So that means our mapping statement is going to say, because it's going in the positive y direction, y plus 1.5. That is the mapping rule between hexagon one and hexagon two. Okay, time for us to work on practice problems. Remember, if you have any questions about any of the examples, write your question down directly in your Notability Notes and we'll discuss them in class.